We are so thankful to be here just for you as your daily dose of hope. I'm Amanda Brocker and this is Tom Hollis and we have a chock full program that is going to bring so much peace to our viewing audience. That's absolutely right. We need that daily dose of hope, don't we? Maybe many of us don't have the hope. There's stress that comes into our lives and we don't know what to do with it many times. Well, Ray Comfort is going to be with us and uh, you've seen him on Way of the Master. He uh, shows us many ways, many most times about how to share the gospel with people. Today, we're going to be talking about a new book he's written called Count Your Blessings and Stop Stressing. And it's going to be a great thing to learn how to be set free from those stresses that affect all of us, Amanda. It's so true. So do you have stress out there? I know I've had stress. You might need to call someone and tell them, tune in to Cornerstone yeah. and watch. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and let me ask you about, speaking of stress, didn't your whole family just run the Pittsburgh Marathon a couple <laughs> of weeks ago? Talk about stress. In fact, stress. I think we have a picture. We have a picture. There they oh, are, the do. entire family. Tell we me about that. We did it. So five of us ran 26.2 miles. As a relay, and then, right? As a relay. And then one of us, our son that's in the Air Force, Caleb, did the whole thing himself and his time was better than our time. Can you imagine that? So how far did you run? I ran 3.8 miles and I didn't die. You know, I had to do, <laughs> listen, I am not a trainer. <laughs> Breathing is super important. And for some reason, when I'm stressed, I tend to hold my breath. So I had to learn, like even when I'm running, keep breathing or you get lightheaded and you're not gonna be able to finish. So <laughs> mom finished with a 13 minute mile pace. I was really happy about that. And so we I'd did, say, it was a victory for I'd our say family. running almost four miles, you should be happy that you're not in heaven and <laughs> that you're right. here with that's us right. today. We that, survived. That's it great. Was wonderful. That's awesome. Yeah, yes. that's neat. Praise God. Well, by watching today's program, you will learn how to overcome stress and dwell in God's abundant peace. You'll also discover how to replace anxiety, fear, and worry with assurance, gratitude, and strength. And we have Stump the Host and Stump the Viewer coming up where you'll earn a shot at winning a fabulous prize pack. <laughs> That's oh, right. wait a minute. I oh, have this. Oh, you, That's have right. the, you have the prize it pack. It is you? the yeah. awesome the Cornerstone T-shirt. Yes, and who doesn't the, want one of these? And a book by Rick Renner That's as right. well. Yeah. Chosen by God. We all yeah. need to know we're chosen by God. Oh, so right. make sure you participate in that viewer a stump. Bit, little no, bit later. stump the viewer. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, uh, you know, we've all heard the saying, I'm too blessed to be stressed, but many of us actually feel that they don't, we, we really struggle with feeling that way. And we really struggle with living that out in our lives. TV host and best-selling author Ray Comfort is our next guest. And he came out with a new devotional called Count Your Blessings and Stop Stressing. He joins us now to share how we can overcome stress and dwell in a God's abundant peace. Ray, it's great to have you back with us on Hope Today. Good to be here. I've just got to say I sure identify with Amanda. I, uh, I used to have trouble breathing when I was running. Um, and I know how important breathing is. And when I was in school, I hated anything that was longer than about 200 yards. So when they had a around the block runs, they go around twice. I actually hid in the hedge the first time round until the guys came <laughs> through a second time and joined them. So I can't stand running because of the breathing factor. So I identify with what you're saying. Anyway, it's great to be here. Thank well, you. Well, look, we have Ray Comfort confessing ancient sins right on television right. here, you know? <laughs> it was before the cross. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, Ray, again, you've been with us many times and you share a lot about, uh, you know, us uh, learning how to share the gospel, the whole way of the master program and everything. But why, why did you write a book about count your blessings? I mean, what, what was your motivation for that? Well, it's the, the emphasis of the book is, is on stress. The Bible speaks of a time when men's hearts will fail them for fear of the things that are coming upon the earth. You just have to watch television for a few minutes to stress yourself out politically. There's hurricanes, there's tornadoes all over the place, there's inflation, there's violence, crime. All these sort of things add to our stress. But there's one factor that isn't added into that I think that we should, um, especially with this generation. You know, we as Christians have hope in our death. This program is about hope. And as Christians, we take for granted the fact that Jesus Christ has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. But each day I go out uh, twice a day to speak in a local college and witness to people and on camera for our YouTube channel. And I find everybody that's not in Christ has a stressful factor they don't even think about, and that is the fear of death, something we, we very rarely talk about, even as Christians. 
There's an elephant in the room of this world that's stomping on everybody and it causes unspeakable stress. One thing I find very, very difficult to uh, tolerate is the fact the world says that people have mental disease if they're stressed. If you are depressed or stressed about life and it's making you feel down, then that's a mental disease. No, it's not. If you're depressed, it's because you're thinking about life. You're a thinking person. You're sane, and life with death at the end of it without any hope in your death is incredibly depressing. And so we have this glorious gospel that sets people free from depression and stress, the stress that comes with the fear of death, and that's the main reason the book is written. I've got a hidden agenda with all our uh, devotionals. I've written a number of devotionals, and the devotionals not only encourage Christians, but encourage them to get out of their comfort zone and share with their faith with this dying world. And it tells them how to do it and how to be free from stress when it comes to doing it. Yeah, you know, uh, you mentioned stress and the, the great gospel that we do have, the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ that sets us free from the fear of death. But many Christians are stressed. What happens to a Christian who really understands and appropriates the promises of God? Well, the Bible says, um, it speaks of having joy from your faith. If you've got faith, you'll have instant joy. Uh, let me give you a, uh, an example. If I said to you, at the end of this program, I'm going to give both of you guys $5 million. As a token of good faith, I've actually sent you via text, PayPal, $100,000 as a down payment. If you really believed that those millions were coming, you'd have instant joy. You'd say, well, now I can get a jacuzzi in my prayer room. There'd be a, a joy because of your faith. And if we believe the exceeding great and precious promises of God, we'll have instant faith. I said, I have instant joy, joy unspeakable and full of glory. And one thing I find is lacking among many professing Christians is the fact they don't read God's word daily. I may have mentioned before, I'm not sure, but for 52 years I've been a Christian, and not one day in those 52 years have I failed to read God's word. And I thought every Christian did that. And I found out only 5% do it. So when I'm out witnessing and I come a across a Christian, they say, oh, look, I love the Lord. I say, you do? Do you read his word daily? And they usually say, I try to. I say, oh, yeah, do you try to eat your food each day? No, you don't try. You just eat it because it's your priority. You like doing it. Well, swing it around. Put your Bible before your belly. You'll never go wrong. Job said, I've esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. And the point of this is that Psalm 1 says, if you meditate on the law of God both day and night, that is, you esteem his word more than your necessary food, you'll be like a tree that is planted by rivers of water. You'll bring forth fruit in season. Your leaf won't with them. Whatever you do will prosper. That's the promise of God, that you'll retain vibrance and freshness as a Christian. You'll bring forth fruit in season. You'll have love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, gentleness, faith, meekness, and temperance. And these are promises from Almighty God. And uh, if you do that, that will happen according to his word. So that's what's lacking in the hearts of many Christians, a failure to be disciplined, to be a disciple of Christ, and read his word daily so you can read the promise of Psalm 1. You know, I, I, I heard someone share many years ago uh, who was teaching, saying, uh, when people say they can't be consistent, you know, they're not consistent, I'm just not a consistent person. He said, well, I notice you all have clothes on. You know, it's like we, we obviously, <laughs> we dress ourselves every day, we eat every day, and yes, uh, we can discipline ourselves to read the word every day. I want to ask you about a particular, I, I wanted to pick out one of the, the devotions in here, Ray. Uh, February 17th, joy that remains. These things I've spoken to you that my joy might remain in you. You know, can you just speak to that or maybe one of the other ones that really spoke to you as you were sharing, writing this? Now, the Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. And that, what, that's, what, that's what keeps me going as a Christian. That's what gives me energy, enthusiasm, is a joy that's an intermingled with gratitude. When you see the cross and all its horror and yet all its glory that God commanded his love toward us and that while we yet sinners, Christ died for us, that cross will be a sense of continual gratitude which will produce a joy in your heart because of God's love for you. You know, I've been asking Christians when I meet them, 
Well, what's the most important verse in the Bible? And often I'll say John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And I say, no, there's one even more important than that. The greatest verse in the Bible. I said, no, nothing more important than John 3.16. Yes, there is. It's in Hebrews chapter 6. Mm. It says, it is impossible for God to lie. Every one of those exceeding promises, exceeding great and precious promises, including John 3.16, falls by, back on that, found, that foundation. Because if it is, it is possible for God to lie, you cannot trust any of his promises. And the Bible says it's, it's repulsive, it's disgusting, it's against the very character of God to be deceitful, to lie. And that means you and I can throw ourselves blindfolded, and as Whitfield said, without reserve, into his mighty hands. And if you believe God's exceeding great and precious promises, as I said earlier, you'll have a joy that's unspeakable because your faith will produce that joy. Amen. There's another one of your devotions, and it's uh, good versus evil. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And if you could just minister to us on that today, because there is a lot of evil that we see around us. It's very hard to get non-Christians to actually define what is evil. You can say, is, is lying evil? Well, not really. You know, you've got to lie sometimes. A great man once said, it's what makes rivers and men crooked, taking the easiest path. And that's what lying does. But you try and put them down on what's evil. Is stealing evil? No. Blasphemy evil? No. No. Adultery? Not really. It can be good for marriage, some experts say. And what we've got to do is say there is, a, there is an absolute standard of good and evil that God has given us. And that is in the Ten Commandments. God wrote them with his finger in stone for a reason. And I like to look at the woman caught in the act of adultery, and Jesus bent down and wrote something in the sand. And we don't know what he wrote, but we do know that those who watched were convicted in their heart and began to leave when they saw what he had written in the, in the sand. And uh, I've heard some say, well, he wrote their sins down. Well, I thought he would have been a long time writing in with a multitude of sins. I think, and I, Billy Graham also agreed, that he wrote the Ten Commandments because the, that is the function of the Ten Commandments is to accuse us of sin, to reflect what we are in truth, that we're sinners. The Ten Commandments are like a mirror. They reflect us morally. And uh, Jesus wrote that in sand to show us that they were once written by the finger of God in stone, but now they were written in sand because the sea of God's grace and mercy can wash away our sins in an instant. So... Um, We've got to remind the world that there is an absolute standard of good and evil, that God is going to judge us by his moral law. As many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law, Romans 2 says. And James chapter 2 says, we shall be judged by the perfect law of liberty. And that perfect law is also written upon the heart. Talking to a young, young guy the other day, he said he didn't believe in God. And I said, well, if you kept God's standards, he said, I don't know what they are. I said, yes, you do. He said, no, there's nothing written down. I said, they're written in your conscience. You, you shall not steal, you shall not lie, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder. It's all written there. And so when you use those commandments to bring the knowledge of sin, the conscience agrees, as Romans 2 verse 15 says, which show the work of the law written on their heart, the conscience bearing witness, the thoughts of meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. Ray, uh, I want to ask you about something else about the devotional, but as you were just talking about that conversation you had, you're out there, as you said, twice a day, you've been doing this for decades. Have you noticed anything different on college campuses or the people you're talking to? Have you noticed a change in attitude or a change in where they're at uh, theologically or spiritually? This is going to be a bit of a shock, but yes, I have noticed a change. They are far more open to the gospel. That is when it's presented biblically. As I said, that everyone is tormented by the fear of death. Hebrews uh, 2 verse 15 tells us that. They have an ongoing uh, horror, a breathtaking horror of the thought of their own demise, their own death. And so I may have mentioned on the program before, when I begin, when I witness to people, I get them on camera, say, would you like to be on a YouTube channel, 276 million views, 1.4 million subscribers, you can be on... This is something exciting. They say, okay, let's do it. 
And the first questions I ask them is, do you ever think about your own death? And they say, yes. And I say, very much. Are you afraid of it? And they say, just a little bit. I say, a little bit? Are you crazy? It's horrific. And they say, yeah, yes, it is. It's, it's breathtakingly horrible. And that opens them, whether they're atheist, whether they're agnostic, no matter what, they're open. Jesus said, lift up your eyes and look in the fields. They're white to harvest. The problem is we haven't taken the sickle of God's law and, uh, and reap the, the harvest field. So then I say, do you know the Bible says Jesus Christ has abolished death? Because that's a crazy statement. That makes no sense because people still die. What do you think that means? They say, I don't know. So would you like to hear? And who's not going to say yes when they're tormented by the fear of death and someone saying there is an answer to this great horror, this grim reaper that's waiting for each of us, and that is that Jesus Christ is about his death. So I explain to them that death is caused by sin. The wages of sin is death. Death is payment that God gives us for our sins. But the gift of God is eternal life, and they're open to the gospel. And I, almost daily, praying with people, not to receive Christ, but just praying they'll have an open heart and that God will change them. And uh, it's a great privilege to do so. It's, a, it's an incredible privilege, and what a precious thing it is for someone to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ clearly spoken. Let me ask you about one thing, and one final promise. It's a, on the back of your devotional, it says that uh, the scriptures will renew the power of your faith. Now, I've prayed with a lot of people who are going through difficult times, and I've told them, this is when you need your faith more than ever, right now. Is, what, what do you see? What does that type of faith mean to you? Well, the scriptures, um, well, you know, I, I, I meet a lot of people that say, I'm a Christian, I'm a Catholic, whatever, but I don't read the Bible. I don't know how they can live and not read the Bible. They're exceeding great and precious promises, but the Bible says there's something very important, and that is, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. And if you don't have God's word to illuminate you daily, um, you're walking in darkness, as Jesus said. That's right. Yes. God's word is like food. You know, I said before about reading the word daily, I'm not saying read Leviticus before you get out of bed. You're going to get indigestion. I'm saying just chew over the words of Jesus. Chew over some of the Psalms. Just meditate on them. That's what it means to meditate. Just chew them over. Let them be absorbed into your spirit. Let them energize you throughout the day. That's what food does. If I fast, just even breakfast, don't come near me because I'm non-creative, I'm grumpy, and I feel tired because food is my energy. I must have hyperglycemia, I think. And it's exactly the same spiritually. If you're weak and you don't have joy, you're grumpy, uh, spiritually, it's because you're not feeding on the word daily. So say to yourself, as some wise person said years ago, and I'm always, quote, I'm always quoting this, no Bible, no breakfast, no read, no feed. Put your Bible before your belly, you'll never go wrong. Mm -hmm. Amen. I love it. Uh, Ray, thank you so much, Ray Comfort. Count your blessings and stop stressing. 365 daily devotionals uh, to help you do that. Ray, thank you so much for being with us today. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Well, stay with us. Coming up, stump the host and stump the viewer. When we think of the New Testament disciples, it's easy to idealize their walk with God. But they were just like you and me. They needed a great deal of help to stay on the right path. We're excited to announce that Tom Hollis has a new devotional coming out this June. Spirit Walk follows the apostles as they attempt to follow Christ, as reflected through the book of Acts. Their experiences can be ours as well. All we need to do is follow the Spirit. Enjoy 40 short devotional entries and discover how the journey of the apostles relates to us today. Spirit Walk includes a daily verse, prayer, and space to journal your personal reflections. Be among the first to receive Tom's devotional, which releases June 12th. Ask for your copy of Spirit Walk when you give today. Call 888-665-4483 or go to ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for your generosity. Hope happens here.
Here we go with Stump the Host. Are you ready for this, Tom I Hollis? I don't know. It was a bad <laughs> week last week with Stump the Host. We're going to find out. All right. Well, we're going to take turns. We're going to answer three questions. Our goal is to get all three correct. Pray for us out there. This is always humbling. All right. <laughs> question number one. Who was Solomon's mother? It was Bathsheba. It was Bathsheba. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Because... Because the first child died. The first child died. Yes. Okay, I think. Final answer, Bathsheba. There we go. All right, all right. It started out. It's a good start, although last week we had a good start too. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see where we go. Okay, here's the next one. Paul called those in the church at Corinth what in his greeting in 1 Corinthians? The saints? They were loving, you know, Corinthians. <laughs> but weren't they saints? I mean, wouldn't he have used saints? Is that? I, I mean, that sounds like a great does that sound term. good? Yes. How about saints? Whoa, oh, yes. yes. Okay. It's interesting because, you know, we are all saints if we are following Christ. I know we've come to put that on a certain group of people, but really, biblically, we are all saints if we are following Christ. Amen. All right, question number three. What did King Jehoshaphat build with King A, wait, Isaiah? Isaiah. Isaiah. That were later destroyed by God. King Jehoshaphat. Uh, ooh. What did he build that was later destroyed by God? I'm looking to you, oh I'm wise <laughs> Tom Hollis. <laughs> yeah, oh wise Tom Hollis uh, finds the holes was in his a, Bible knowledge. Was it knowledge. a barrier? Was no, that? I don't know. I thought it was some kind of water. Um, a water, well. water, not well, but a water aqueduct or delivery system or well, something like that. We'll go with we that. Go. Oh, 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 oh. Waterway. Okay. Ships. Okay. Oh, we were way off. We were way off. I didn't know they were captains. Right. <laughs> Two out of three is not bad. We'll, we'll take, take it. it for sure. <laughs> well, including in this is your chance. Uh, we have something called Stump the Viewer. Well, it's fun to test, test our biblical knowledge. Yes, it is fun, and it's good to learn some new things. Well, in case you're new to Stump the Viewer, we get a chance to ask you, the audience, a Bible trivia question. If you know the answer to today's question, you can go to ctvn.org stump to play along and select the answer. If you guessed correctly, you'll then be entered into a random drawing, and you could be selected to win this awesome prize pack that Amanda just showed us that includes uh, the book gift of the month and a Cornerstone TV t-shirt. Okay, here's your question. Paul tells the Ephesians to walk in goodness, righteousness, and truth as children of what? Is it A, obedience, B, light, C, thanksgiving, and D, Abraham? So, Remember, if you know the answer, go to ctvn.org slash stump to play along. The randomly selected winner will be announced on tomorrow's program, so don't delay. Get your votes in. Woohoo! It's so exciting. <laughs> My goodness. So, know. you know, just thinking about uh, the words that Ray had shared, I couldn't help but picture the woman at the well. I just had been studying this, but you know, we talked about the freedom that we truly have that comes from Christ. And in that moment in her life, you know, he's there talking about this living water that you'll never thirst again. Yeah. And then he reads her, her mail and tells her, yeah, I know you're not living with your husband because you had five and you're with one that isn't your husband. And her spiritual eyes, I want to say, were enlightened. But the freedom I believe that she received in that moment is why she left her jar at the well. She never did fill it. And she went running to go tell the village because she had found something that's worth more than anything in this world. And that's the assurance that Ray was talking about, that only the Holy Spirit can give us in this life. 
Well, you know, that, that reminds me of the, of the pearl of great price, that some, uh, the, someone finds a, 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 a pearl, you know, or finds something of value, finds treasure, and goes and buys the whole field for this one piece of treasure. And that's how, how important salvation is, that our whole life, everything that we own, let's, let's go there first, everything that we own, everything of our kingdom, of our monetary sustenance, everything, all that is as nothing compared to that pearl of great price, that salvation of Jesus Christ, the one who has given himself for you. The Bible says that he endured the cross for the joy set before him. What was that joy that gave him so much endurance? It was that you would be restored back to the Father. It's that the Father's broken heart for you being separated from him that it would be healed and brought back into that place of joy, pure joy, in knowing that you are in the kingdom of God. Amanda, that's the pearl of great price. That's right. You know, he talked about how, um, I gotta look at my notes. He said, read and then feed. No, yeah. no read, no feed. No read, like no in other words, if you're not gonna read your Bible, then you're not gonna eat. And I think we have to get to that place in our life where we're that serious about the word of God. Or as we opened the program, I was talking about breathing and Ray said he identified, like sometimes I'll just hold my breath, like if it's stressful and we have to breathe. And I think we need to picture the work of God, the word of God as breath. We spiritually cannot survive without it. It's impossible. So today our encouragement to you is God's word. I want to read to you from Proverbs 4. This was one of my most favorite verses as I was growing with the Lord. It says in verse 20 um, of chapter 4, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ears to my saying. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Y'all, if we can get this of how important God's word is for us, we can carry our Bible around with us everywhere. We can sleep with it under our pillow, put it on our coffee table at home, and we can be looking at it. But if we're not getting into it and actually eating it, the benefits of the word, even for your health, will not be there. So we encourage you today to get into God's Word. Get the devotional that Ray wrote or another tool to help you tap into God's Word every day because He sure does love you.